Okay, hello, good evening, good evening, Indu. So uh, let's do the customary check. Hope I'm audible. Am I Indu? Let me know. Uh, am I audible? Good evening, good evening, Lakshman. Good evening. Okay, so today we will uh, we, we are starting with uh, economy current affairs. Okay, for for uh, coming prelims. Okay, so again, the one thing I would like to say. Uh, one secret of cracking uh, prelims examination, be it economy or be it any other subject, is uh, to have an eye for counterintuitive facts. Okay, the idea is if you know, if you can guess something as correct without knowing it exactly, then you can also guess it in exam. Okay, but if there is if there is some fact or some concept which is counterintuitive which if you do not know, you won't be able to answer in exam, then that kind of facts will help you crack examination, okay? Uh, so to begin with, let's let's see. Okay, so in today's session, we'll be discussing about uh, budget 2022-23, okay? We won't be able to uh, complete all the things, uh, but, but let's see how much we will be able to do it. And later we can do it, okay? So, 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 so let's, let's, let's play this game. Okay. Soil, soil health card. Okay. Soil health card is, is by which ministry? Which ministry uh, implements soil health card scheme? Let me know uh, in, in chat. Okay. So, so, so uh, uh, it's ministry of agriculture, right? So soil health card is by Ministry of Agriculture. So you could have guessed it right. Soil health card, it must be Ministry of Agriculture. So uh, you could have guessed it easily. So there is no magic here. Okay. It's normal as you expected. Okay. But tell me which ministry is related to National Program for Organic Production. I want you to participate. Just try to guess. Which ministry implements national program for organic production? Oh, so 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 those of you who already know it, you uh, Avinav Lakshman, you all have spoiled the game. Okay, so so I wanted someone to say that Ministry of Agriculture indeed do this. Okay, but Ministry of Commerce is is correct answer. But if you do not know, if you do not know that Ministry of Commerce implements this scheme, then it was very difficult to guess it right hope here you all will agree that it is very difficult to guess that ministry of commerce implements it again so the idea is idea is if you see something very intuitive fact that you could have guessed it like in the case of soil health card implemented by ministry of agriculture now these kind of facts you do not have to revise time and again right but the moment you see national program of organic production is by ministry of commerce then you know that this is counterintuitive fact. So these kind of facts you have to focus on. You have to remember. You, you have to revise more, right? So okay. Now let's let's move on. Okay. So let's get a start. Okay. Uh, so how we will uh, move forward uh, in this session is first we will uh, discuss some of the static part of budget. Okay. And then slowly we will move towards the themes discussed in this year's budget. Okay, we will be uh, covering some part today and some part in yesterday, in, in tomorrow's first session, right? Okay. So first thing, who prepares budget? Okay. So budget, budget division of Ministry of Economic Affairs. Okay, in, minist in finance ministry. So Department of Economic Affairs presents budget. Okay. UPSC have, hello, hello. Uh, good evening, Hema. UPSC have already asked who prepares uh, Economic uh, survey probably uh, in 2016 or 15, uh, UPSC have already asked this that which department publishes uh, economic survey. So, so who prepares budget? Uh, this is something very relevant fact for you. Department of Economic Affairs in Finance Ministry. Or I think UPSC have asked this question itself, not not economic survey. This question at itself has been asked by UPSC. Okay. So this to clear that who prepares budget. This is basic fact, you know it. Okay. 
Now with along with budget, the list of budget documents presented by parliament, presented to the parliament beside the finance ministry's budget speech. Okay. Now along with along with uh, budget speech these documents are presented now it's very important to know these documents because you may simply, may simply say that which of the following documents are presented okay so national finance statement this is very simple budget this is budget okay and this is article 112 okay demand for grants we'll just see what demand for grant means okay demand for grant this is article 1113 and finance bill article 1110a now tell me in between these things b and c provisions related to taxation is covered in demand for grants or in finance bill uh, i think it's it's a maximum from my side uh, archika will you, will you will you try to uh, is, is is this is this problem for all okay 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 Archie. okay thank you okay so 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 yeah so so provision related to new taxation is is uh, related to demand of grant or finance bill okay so so uh, we will we'll just be discussing what it is okay so hold on so a annual finance statement demand for grants finance bill then policy statements mandated under FRBM Act. Okay, so here ma macroeconomic framework statement that's one, and medium term fiscal policy come fiscal policy statements. Be very careful. Be very careful here. At this stage, be very careful. FRBM Act says that we need four kind of uh, four, four kind of documents need to be presented. That's what FRBM Act says. But here it is only macroeconomic framework statement one medium term fiscal policy two and fiscal policy strategy document statement three where is medium term where, where is where is medium term expenditure document so so keep this in mind there is one fourth document also which is not presented along with budget okay we will have a look at it when we will be talking about frbm act okay if anybody remember let me know here okay kisi ko yaad hai ki fourth document ek aur hai which FRBM Act mandates government to present, okay? But that document is not presented along with uh, along, along with budget, okay? It's presented in the next next session. Anybody uh, can tell me name of that document, which is mandated, which is mandated by FRBM Act, but it is not presented along with budget. Okay, so I will move on. Okay, but any, if anyone if anyone of you uh, remember, let me know here. Okay, now see again, again one way that UPSC can directly ask. Okay, very simple question, direct question, single statement wala. Which of the following uh, documents can be presented? Uh, which of the following documents are presented by the government in uh, along with budget speech? So, so this this is very simple. One question can be asked. Another question: Which of the following which of the following documents are presented as part of constitutional? Uh, mandate of the government okay so so see initial three abc annual finance statement demand for grant and finance bill these three are part of constitutional requirement okay these three are part of constitutional requirement while well, frbm act okay this is this is the act which, which was passed later on okay so very clear you should know what is the source of authority for which which document okay because upsc can trick you there okay now explanatory documents uh, these these documents i just uh, put these documents for the sense of completion it's 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 very unlikely to be asked okay so expenditure budget receipt budget th these things you know these things are not going uh, upsc probably is not going to ask you these things but you should still know that budget at glance and then output outcome monitoring framework these things are also presented okay so now now we know which documents are presented by the government in budget session? Okay. So, okay, demand for grants. We have seen uh, we have seen that demand for grant is also presented just after this. So, estimates of expenditure from the Consolidated Front of India. 
estimates of expenditure from the consolidated fund of India. Okay, so it is presented demand. So demand for grant includes estimate of expenditure from consolidated fund of India. Okay, so it is presented, which is required to be voted by the Lok Sabha. Okay, and it is presented in Lok Sabha first, right? Presented to the Lok Sabha along with uh, budget, that is annual finance statement. So this is the right. Okay, so this is demand for grant. and then finance bill okay we will not go into a lot of polity part okay we will quickly be moving to economy part of it okay but but uh, to begin with uh, it's it's something we have to do okay so finance bill imposition abolition remission and regulation of tax and propose so uh, at, at at the at the beginning of the session i asked that question that uh, finance the imposition of taxes belongs to uh, which which document okay so it, it belongs to finance bill Okay, recently finance bill got passed by the parliament, isn't it? Okay, it also contains provisions relating to budget that could be classified as money bill. You know that finance bill is a type of money bill. Okay, again, we will not be going into uh, the policy part, but we should know that taxation related thing is related to finance bill. Okay, now what is the difference between revenue budget and, and uh, capital budget? I am sure most of you are very clear with this. Okay. So if, okay, that is if, if something is related to uh, increase or decrease of asset or increase or decrease of liability, then it is revenue expenditure or capital. If, if, if some uh, expenditure or revenue is related to uh, increase or decrease of asset, then it is related to revenue or capital. Indu, think, think, think once again and let me know. Okay. Lakshman, Avinav. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now, now Indu, clear. Okay. So if if there is if there is any expenditure which is related to increase of asset or or increase of liability, then these things are related to capital expenditure. And all else are related to revenue. Okay. So 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 clear. So in 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 the revenue budget again there is a revenue receipt side and there will there will be revenue expenditure side. Revenue receipt side again there will be two two types of receipts right tax receipts and non tax receipts tax receipts. So everybody know the all all the taxes which comes to the central government are part of tax revenue. Is me to koi aisa nahi hai ki. Elaboration ki ho. But here, non tax receipts. Examples of non tax receipts. Okay, we already have we already have it listed here that interest and dividends or investment made by the government are part of non tax receipts, right? Okay, let me let me let me extend here and now now uh, tell me examples of non tax receipt. See why I am asking you guys these things is this is basic fundamentals. Okay, after this, we will start with the uh, budget related provisions and themes okay but at least you should be very clear with these things upsc nowadays since last 2 3 years upsc have been coming back to fundamentals okay the typical current affairs question is not coming up okay the typical typical current affairs which is not directly linked to uh, a static portion nowadays whatever current affairs is coming is current affairs which is inspiring the uh, the fundamental uh, syllabus okay Okay, uh, external borrowing uh, for long term. External borrowing is, is external borrowing. How external borrowing is part of revenue? Um, Abhishek, how external borrowing is part of uh, reven revenue uh, in, uh, revenue receipt? If, if you are borrowing from somebody, then actually you are, it, it is leading to your increase in liability, isn't it? Right, right, right. So, so this uh, external borrowings will will be under uh, capital receipt. Okay, be very careful. So, non-tax receipt, interest and dividends on in, okay on investment made by the government, interest or di and dividend on investment made by the government. Suppose government of India will invest in uh, some property in United States. Okay, so whatever interest will come from that will be part of revenue receipt. Right. 
and fees and other receipts of services rendered by the government okay so if you are uh, using uh, railways to to move from one part of india to other then you are buying uh, railway ticket okay so hopefully hopefully you are buying railway ticket you are not traveling without ticket okay that's illegal so if you are buying railway ticket then then uh, you are paying government and that that income for the government is revenue receipt very clear everybody is clear about these 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 concepts fundamental concepts revenue and capital okay okay revenue expenditure again which does not lead to creation of assets okay so 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 uh, any expenditure which is uh, which which uh, which is rela related to day to day functioning of the government that is revenue expenditure okay so so uh, suppose you will uh, when, when you will crack examination and you will become I ias officer then your salary will be part of government's revenue expenditure or capital expenditure the salary which you will be getting uh, after after cracking the exam uh, will be go okay okay right so that will be revenue expenditure okay okay very clear okay so so uh, here again example for rendering various services making interest payment on debts meeting subsidies grants whatever subsidies are being given uh, to 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 uh, say say farmers or to to poor people uh, whatever subsidies are given are part of revenue receipt okay because it is not leading to that it is not directly directly leading to creation of assets or or liabilities okay then all grants given to state governments suppose central government is giving some grant to uh, to 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 uh, say jammu and kashmir or or to say uh, hilly uh, uh, hilly hilly state say arunachal pradesh for something then all these grants given to state governments are part of revenue receipt okay very clear here the components of revenue receipt and capital receipt okay because this can be directly asked in examination that which of the following are part of this okay now we have already covered revenue so we won't go much into into much detail here in capital budget okay it's it's directly opposite if you know revenue then you know capital budget at least for exam purpose the more detail in in more detail you will go uh, the more complex it will get but for exam purpose exam ke liye itna kafi hai capital receipt leads to creation of liability or reduction of assets so example of capital receipts loan raised by government from from public okay how uh, okay let me ask you one this question uh, tell me one example how how government takes loan from public how government is taking loan from public okay so securities right securities right 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 so t bills t bill is a typical uh, is a typical method in which government takes loan from public right borrowings by the government through sale of treasury bills okay loan received from so whatever loan government is right right so whatever loan government is 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 taking from either internal sources or external sources external loan and internal loan both kind of loans are part of capital uh, receipt okay very clear and then uh, disinvestment receipt okay this in why why disinvestment receipt is part of capital capital receipt disinvestment receipt suppose government have sold air india okay there is nothing to suppose this is a fact now okay so so uh, yes right right so so since since selling of uh, so selling of a stake in air india leads to reduction of asset so it is part of uh, capital uh, receipt not revenue receipt right because there is a reduction of asset thank you thank you lakshman thank you everybody for the participation let's okay let's 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 move on okay and similarly recovery of loan from states and duties okay so suppose government of say some state say government of bihar will pay back loan uh, to the central government which it has which it has taken say a couple of year back then that repayment of loan by the government of bihar to the central government will be part of capital receipt okay because there was already a asset of central government when when uh, when government is giving loan then that is asset for the government right so it's it's the same same like banking when bank is giving loan then that is 
asset for the bank or liability in fact upsc have asked this question in 2019 right so so if government is giving a loan then that is asset right but but when you are depositing money in the in money in the bank then that is liability for for a bank if you are putting money in the bank then it is asset for you but it is a liability for bank because it have to it will have to pay back sometime later okay so hope hope this this concept of asset and liability is also clear okay again capital expenditure so again same expenditure on acquisition of assets okay so so if if uh, if if government is uh, investing uh, to build a road okay then that is again capital expenditure okay or machinery equipments investment in in cr etc okay and loans and advances granted by the central government if central government is giving loan to somebody again then that is capital expenditure okay suppose suppose uh, central government is giving loan to a foreign country let's say let's say to sri lanka okay sri lanka is facing crisis okay so so sri lanka is asking for loan suppose india will give loan okay grant okay uh, then that will be capital expenditure right loan loan if if there is a interest uh, involved then then that will be a capital expenditure okay so so i, I think uh, fundamental uh, fundamental issues related to budget is clear fundamental terms related to budget is clear here right now now frbm act okay again we will see uh, we will quickly see some some basic aspects about frbm act which can be asked okay we will not go into much detail uh, we will just stick to the things which is important for prelims examination okay so FRBM Act 20, uh, 2004, okay, to ensure intergenerational equity in fiscal management. Okay, it's just FRBM Act in, 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 simple, in simple terms, FR, what FRBM Act says. It says that if you will take a loan now, then you will have to repay it later, okay, and later, your, uh, later, later generation will have to pay loan, okay, repay loan, okay, and that, that, that repayment amount will be more because of interest rate okay so if you will take more loan now it may be it, it may become very unsustainable so that's what uh, frbm act said that take loan that's all right but take loans within limit okay do not do not cross limits and that limit was set by frbm act simple okay frbm act made it mandatory for the government to place along with the union budget document in the parliament these things okay so frbm act made it mandatory now again be very careful here okay and and remember the question i asked when we were talking about documents which is presented uh, in the parliament along with budget speech okay so so identify here we will be discussing uh, four documents and and identify the document identify which is not presented by the okay so one medium term fiscal policy statement this is one one which is presented macroeconomic framework statement this is second which need to be presented by the government third fiscal policy strategy statement this need to be presented and medium term expenditure framework statement now tell me let me let me make it let me adjust its size okay so that all four is here okay so all these four documents which government have to mandatorily uh, present in parliament is here now tell me which is okay now now tell me which document is not presented uh, in 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 parliament along with budget we just discussed documents which need to be presented in parliament along with budget okay so which of the following which of which of these documents are not presented along with budget right very clear so medium term expenditure statement is is presented as part of frbm act right it is presented as part of frbm act but it is not presented along with budget very clear be, be very clear with this because upsc may play game here okay so it is presented as part of frbm act right but it is not presented as part of 
but um, j just after budget okay it is presented in next session very clear now let's move on okay nk singh committee was related uh, was formed to to uh, to evaluate performance of frbm act okay and it says that to target fiscal deficit okay it says that government should target simultaneously fiscal deficit and debt government should target these two things okay frbm act nk singh committee report said that government should target these two things mainly primarily government should target fiscal deficit and debt while doing away with revenue deficit targeting now this is something which can be asked okay be very careful that nk singh committee report says that government need not target revenue deficit okay effective revenue deficit and revenue deficit okay very clear okay so targets keep on changing but you should know that fiscal deficit and debt government have to target okay and what is what is the what is the debt limit government targets what percentage of debt uh, fbm act permits government to have okay so general government debt is 60% of gdp by 2024-25 what is general government debt anybody can tell me what is general government tell debt what is meaning of the term general here why it is general why not simply government debt right right lakshman right right so whenever we say general government debt we mean uh, the combined debt of both central and state so combined debt of both central and state is about the permitted level is 60% of gdp okay what is current level of general debt approximately anybody can make a guess what is current level of general debt at present current level currently what is the what, what is the level of uh, general government debt in india okay frbm act says that general government debt should be 60% of gdp by 2024-25 now within this 60 60% if if frbm act will not say which which government will have what limit then again center and center and state will start fighting okay so there will be politics going on that's why frbm act says that 40% of gdp is limit for central government okay so central government can have 40% uh, for, for the the debt the debt uh, limit for central government is 40% of gdp and debt limit for state government is 20% of gdp this is for state government right what what is current level of debt anybody remember is it 60 is it, is it more than 60% or is it less than 60% at least tell me this this uh, give me this idea that whether general government debt currently okay okay yes 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 it is it is it is it is more than 60% it's 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 around 90% currently it's 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 around 90% okay because of covid and and other things mainly mainly because of covid where uh, because of what uh, expenditure of the government increased on various welfare uh, initiatives and health related things current general government debt is more uh, about 90% okay so that is thing of concern because that but but that is not a thing of concern for prelims examination for prelims this is important okay 60% is what is important and this this bifurcation that 40% for central 20% for state okay escape clause okay now again two things two things one though very simple question can be asked that directly escape clause often seen in news is related to okay then abcd they can ask so you know that is escape clauses related to uh, frbm act okay or 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 uh, fiscal uh, fiscal management whatever you know that and now what does what does escape clause say escape clause says that if there is some unforeseen circumstances if economy is in 
great distress then government have some leeway to uh, to 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 increase its expenditure beyond the limits prescribed by frbm act right so if escape clause is invoked the government can exceed the stipulated deficit for the year by up to 0.5% okay so whatever is the uh, target set by the government government can exceed that target by 0.5% okay that is that is what escape clause means okay very clear about escape clause okay government have used this provision uh, du during during covid times okay and and when what are the circumstances in which government can uh, invoke this escape clause okay one one the basic thing that whenever you think that it is it is it is uh, it is some uh, government is in very very uh, financially very distressed condition then it can do but typically overriding considerations of national security okay there is there is nothing to guess about it okay if you see it that if there is a national security issue then of course government can um, can 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 invest more than uh, what it budgeted acts of war of course there is nothing to guess about no these things are in these things are intuitive facts these things you can guess even without knowing it isn't it calamity of national proportion okay so so when there was covid if if someone will say that there will be another flood then will government uh, will 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 government uh, use escape clause invoke, invoke escape clause of course it will okay so there is nothing to remember here these are these are all intuitive things okay now this is this is bit counter uh, i will not say it is counter intuitive but you will be in two mind okay so far reaching structural reforms in the economy with unanticipated fiscal implications see first point was like too intuitive you don't have to remember it it's it's ye to hoga hi hoga okay sochne ki zarurat nahi hai but far reaching structural reforms in the economy with unanticipated fiscal implication you may get caught in two minds okay so very clear so 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 pay attention here that in in this case also government can invoke escape clause and then then third point third point is also very important sharp decline in real output growth of at least 3% point for previous four okay sharp decline in real output growth of at least 3% point below the average of previous four quarters okay you should be very clear here it's it's not saying it's it's not saying like ki uh, gdp should should decrease by three years something like that it's not talking that that thing it's saying that sharp decline in real output growth of at least 3% point below the average of previous four quarters so whatever so suppose uh, previous four quarters growth is 8% and suddenly now the growth is uh, what 3% so the decline is of 5% then it can invoke okay matlab agar output bahut kam ho gaya 3% point kam ho gaya uh, previous four quarter ke average se then it can invoke uh, escape clause very clear now you can be trapped here also you can be tricked here also okay upsc may may, may say that uh if 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 uh gdp will decline uh by say 2% for 3 years in a row or 2 years in a row then government can use this okay but that is not the case so here you should be very careful okay and last point that we already talked that if escape clause is invoked then this is what uh this is this for this is what uh government can do okay it can exceed the targets by 0.5% okay clear so so now we have covered most of the uh, most of, more, most of a static part of the budget okay roughly which is relevant to exam okay now let's let's talk about budget 2022 23 okay exam related things okay four priorities of budget you should be very clear about this okay because question can be directly asked which of the following were among the four priorities of the budget okay i i know that upsc uh, may not go to this level but upsc have time and again proved every year upsc is proving that you cannot uh, predict it to to greater extent okay to ek do question to aisa hota hai jo ekdam simple sa puch denge just to check that whether you know no 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 very basic thing okay so four priorities you should be very clear about pm gati shakti inclusive development financing of uh, investment 
and productivity in enhancement, sunrise opportunities, energy transition, and climate access. Okay, so you should know that these things are there. Okay, there is nothing to discuss in this, but just that you should be aware of the fact, right? Now let's say PM Gati Sakti. Okay, now what is PM Gati Sakti? Again, you should be very careful that. It is not something related to uh, direct investment in uh, infrastructure. PM Gati Sakti is not directly related to investment in infrastructure, right? So, so if a statement says that uh, under, under PM Gati Sakti scheme, uh, government will invest uh, so and so crore, say 100 crore rupees in, uh, in, in, in road building, then those kind of statements will be incorrect because PM Gati Sakti is a digital platform okay is a common umbrella digital platform this is one thing which you, you should know about pm gati sakti one digital platform another multimodal connectivity it is, it is a national master plan for multimodal connectivity again multimodal connectivity you mean you understand meaning of multimodal connectivity right that uh, connectivity across the mediums okay be it uh, roadway railway airway waterway so across across the medium so pm gati sakti two things you have to remember it is multimodal not any one only and second is that it is a digital platform okay which will help in coordination activities okay so that's that's all it is okay and it will bring 16 ministries including rail, railway roadways you don't have to remember ministries okay you don't need it you don't uh, i don't think you should remember 16 also but since it is there on the screen, let's uh, see, it, it will bring 16 ministries. UPSC is not going to ask which of the following ministries, okay? Hopefully, UPSC will not do that thing. So, here to okay. Common umbrella digital platform will bring 16 ministries, including railways and roadways together for integrated planning, okay? And real-time tracking is important, right? So, 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 related to PM Gati Sakti, the, the, Key terms you have to remember is it is multimodal connectivity, second digital platform, and third real time basis tracking. Okay, I don't think UPSC can can ask other things. Okay, seven engines. So yeah, yeah, all all these all these things. So in first uh, connectivity is a related things. Okay, that road, railway, airport, mass transport, everything is written here. You don't have to remember. Then. Then this, this point is again important for exam perspective that it's not just that only, only central governments, um, only central governments um, infrastructure, connective uh, infrastructure is, uh, initiatives will be uh, tracked, okay. Infrastructure schemes of state governments can also be tracked, okay. So again, be very careful. This is one thing which can be asked, right that state government's initiatives can also be asked, they can also be tracked. Clear? Clear here? Okay. And all these schemes, all these schemes which you have been uh, listening to time and again is also covered here. Okay. That is Bharat Mala, Sagar Mala, Inland Waterway, all these, all these connectivity schemes will be uh, coordinated on PM Gati Sakti. Clear? Uh, but you have to remember it that these things are part of it. You should have seen it once. Okay. There is nothing in this which UPSC can track you, trap you. Now, this this scheme will subsume national infrastructure pipeline. Okay. Now here you should be very careful. You should know that this is this is a fact. Okay. That Kati Sakti scheme will subsume national infrastructure pipeline. Okay. That, that, that's it, okay. Okay, some of the targets of PM Gati Sakti. Again, we are not, we are not, there, there are many more targets under PM Gati Sakti. It's just that we are not listing all those targets because all those targets are in terms of numbers, this many kilometers, uh, things like that, those numbers. It's very unlikely that UPSC will uh, ask those numbers. Okay, so those numbers will not be asked. So I have listed on, I have identified only those targets which do not have big fancy numbers. Okay, like connecting all gram panchayats with high speed internet 
and 4G mobile connectivity by 2022. Anybody can tell me uh, how UPSC can track you, can trap you in this statement? Like this is one of the targets of PM Gati Sakti scheme. Okay. Now, how UPSC can trap you uh, in this statement? How it can frame a statement so that uh, you may get confused. Acha, Lakshman, Indu, anybody? Uh, okay, okay. By 2030, yes. Yes, this is one way. This is one way to trap. 5G, yes, Avishek. Yes, this, this was what I was thinking. 5G, since, since 5G is in use uh, so much that 5G can be, can be one of the tools used by the government to, to trap. Right. Rural, urban, Hindu, right, right, right. So it says that connecting all, all 2.5 lakh gram panchayat with high speed internet and 4G mobile, right? So, so again, my idea of asking you these things is whenever you are reading it, you should be thinking in on, on these lines, okay? When, when you will be looking for traps in the statement, then you will remember these things much better. Okay, then in exam when question will come, it will uh, it will hit you. Okay, so ek fact to ye ho gaya, ek, ek target to ye ho gaya. Second target, 50% of India's power generation capacity is to be made by renewable energy source by 2024-25. Okay, mostly, take care. 50% of India's power generation capacity is to be made by renewable energy source, right? So very clear, 50% at 2024, 25. These two things you have to remember. All the states to be connected with the trunk natural gas pipeline network by 2027. See, the years are different, okay, in each. So you have to be a bit, bit careful. Though I don't think that UPSC will uh, will go to uh, will will uh, will stoop to that that level that they will uh, they will play with year. But uh, what to say? Uh, you, you cannot trust this organization. In terms of in 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 terms of setting trap, of course, of course, in uh, U, uh, UPSC is a very trustworthy organization. Uh, when when we uh, uh, when when we talk about uh, the the uh, the credibility it has established for itself by 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 conducting exams fairly uh, in in those parameters, it's very trustworthy. But for a for for a aspirant, here it's in 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 terms of setting traps, you cannot trust. So all, all states to be connected with the trunk natural gas pipeline network by 2027. Okay, can you tell me here uh, what percent of India's energy needs currently is met by uh, natural gas? Rough, rough idea. Roughly, the sales, uh, take a guess that what percent of India's current, uh, current uh, energy needs is met by natural gas? Again, why I am asking you this question is that UPSC may at times just just give a statement that India's uh, in fifteen percent of India's energy need is met by natural gas. Now, will it be a correct statement or incorrect statement? Okay, so so Avishek says that about thirty to forty-five percent of India's energy need is met by natural gas. What about others? Anybody would like to take a guess? Anybody would say uh, whether Avsek is closer to uh, the answer or 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 is far? Okay, lesser. How much lesser? Ten percent. Okay, so Hindu Hindu is okay. Hindu is saying ten percent. Okay, Hindu is much more closer. Okay, Hindu is much more closer. Closer. It's 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 around six percent. Okay. So so currently in. Uh, Less than 10% of India's energy energy needs is being met by this. Okay. Okay. So, ek to get all the states to be connected with the trunk natural gas pipeline network by 2027. All states. Be very careful because you may get confused. Uh, Archika, uh, previous slide. What you want to discuss here? Anything? Anything you missed here? Anything you want to discuss on, uh, on this slide, Archika? 
Okay, okay. Okay. So all states to be connected to the trunk natural gas pipeline. All. Okay. This is very important. It is all. Okay. You you may get confused that maybe in hilly states they are not planning now. Okay. So uh, maybe. Uh, okay. So 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 things like that may come into your mind, but it's it's all. <laughs> then this all state capitals in northeastern region to be connected with either four lane national highway or two alternate alignments, whatever. So you, here you have to remember 20, 24, 25 and all state capitals in northeastern regions. Okay, 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 Archika. Okay. Okay. So here all state capitals in northeastern region. Okay. So all state capitals in northeastern region. Again, UPSC may trap you by saying that all state capitals to be connected with either four lane. Uh, Either four lane national highway. Okay. So so again be very careful. This is this this uh, this thing is talking about all state capitals in the northeastern region only. Okay. So whenever you are reading, you have to be careful about these kind of traps. Okay. So 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 now we are almost done with PM Gati Sakti. Now we are here. Unified logistics interface platform. You live. Okay. Now again, ULIP was in news because of this and ULIP also was in news because government is saying that all, all, all connectivity related data will be linked with ULIP. Okay. So all you have to see is ULIP is designed to enhance efficiency and reduce logistics cost. Okay. This though with name it is clear, Unified Logistics Interface Platform. Okay. Hopefully UPSC will not play a game and UPSC will not give you only ULIP. Okay. Because if UPSC will give only ULIP, and you don't remember the full form, then you will be in trouble. So you should remember that ULIP is related to logistics. Once you remember that ULIP is related to logistics, then you won't have to remember all these big facts. Okay, because, because anything to enhance efficiency and reduce logistic cost, this is a very innocent looking thing. Okay, there, there is nothing which, uh, there, there is no way in which it can be uh, wrong. If it is unified logistics interface platform, then it will aim to enhance efficiency and reduce logistic cost. Okay. How? By creating a transparent platform. Okay. By bringing all modes of transportation under a single window. Now, again, this is, this is a typical fact. This is a typical fact related to ULIP that ULIP plans to bring all modes of transportation under a single window. Okay. So, so ULIP want to be a platform where data from all modes of connectivity will come. So that coordination work will be easy. Okay. So uh, from from ULIP, uh, I expect a very 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 simple question. As long as you remember ULIP is related to logistics, you will be able to do that. But here is here is a fact. ULIP hackathon logistics. Okay. Now here see ULIP hackathon logistics. Here unless you know what ULIP is, you will not be able to say what it is related to. Okay. Unless it is, it will also say logistics. If, it will, if in question logistics will be written, then at least you will have some idea. Okay. But but if it will just just give you this part, ULIP hackathon, then you will be in trouble. So this is again something counterintuitive. You should be careful about this fact that ULIP hackathon is organized by Niti Aayog. Okay. So ULIP ULIP hackathon is organized by Niti Aayog and Atal Innovation Mission. Okay. And in coordination with uh, NICDC and and NLSDL. Okay. Now here UPSC can again trap you. UPSC may give you this full ULIP hackathon logistics. Okay. So now you know that it is something related to logistics, and then it will tell you that it is organized by Ministry of uh, say Road, Ministry of Transport. Okay. So. So so so. Uh, what, what other way UPSC can trap? ULIP hackathon uh, from given data, what other way UPSC can trap? Let me know uh, in, in, in what other way UPSC can trap you here. Okay, so just remember, ULIP, you know it is related to logistics. Another thing to remember is, it is organized by Niti Aayog and Atal Innovation Mission. 
okay right 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 cyber security right since 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 the since since hackathon is used so upsc may say that ulip hackathon is related to cyber security okay it may say that it is related to uh, incentivizing people to find a solution to cyber security okay something like that so you have to be careful ulip hackathon is related to logistics and it is organized by niti ayog okay now here new public sector enterprise policy okay new public sector enterprise policy again again uh, this this policy have been talked about in in this year's budget okay this policy have not been have not been introduced in this year's budget be very careful new public sector enterprise policy have not been introduced in this year's budget but the the budget have talked about this okay so what it does is new public sector enterprise policy it classified all the sectors in two parts it says that some of the sectors are strategic and some of the sectors are non strategic okay and those sectors which are non strategic it says that eventually all all public sector enterprises in non strategic sectors will be privatized or closed okay be very careful here all here here all it says that new public it says that all public sector enterprises in non strategic sectors will eventually be privatized or closed now this is very extreme statement you know that in 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 uh, in in prelims examination there is this totka okay so people say that whenever you see a extreme statement just mark it as incorrect hai na ye ek totka jaisa hai ki jaise hi extreme statement dekha wo incorrect hi hoga right but upsc may trap you so so uh, you can you can you can reliably use this this to cut trick only if you know those statements which are extreme but also correct okay so in in order to use this to cut trick that all extreme statements in the examination are incorrect you should know which extreme statements are indeed correct okay so that you won't be trapped so new public sector po enterprise policy says that sectors can be divided into two parts strategic sectors non strategic sectors non strategic sectors okay all all pses in non strategic sectors will eventually be either sold either privatized or or closed that's the one thing for a strategic sector it says that bare minimum presence of public sector enterprises is essential so that there is a sense of competition okay now which sectors are strategic we'll just see it says that new public sector enterprise policy says that these sectors are strategic now this so you can guess isn't it atomic energy space and defense are strategic there is there is no no rocket science about that you can guess okay without without remembering anything you can guess transport and communicate telecommunications now is it a strategic or not depends on your current level of understanding okay first so it was it was it was it was very simple okay, this was this will be a strategic transport and telecommunication also is a strategic because in case of disruption in transport and telecommunication there will be lots of problems power petroleum coal and other minerals these are energy things okay so any disruption in energy will have consequences far reaching consequences that's why it is also a strategic banking insurance and financial services also a strategic so you should know these 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 four strategic sectors okay upsc may say that according to new public policy enterprise for new uh, public enterprise policy which of the following sectors are among the strategic sectors so these are among the strategic sectors all all other sectors are non strategic sectors so in a strategic sectors at least one psc will remain okay at least one plc uh, will remain why why at least one psc should be there why at least one public player should be there in a strategic sector we just discussed at least one should be there why okay 
that at least one should be there to ensure competition okay or else there will be monopoly of some private player so one at least one public sector enterprise will remain and second is maximum of four public sector enterprise now this is important this point is important the policy says that there can be maximum of four public sector enterprise only in the strategic sectors okay maximum of four so this point is uh, if you will see this point you may uh, you 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 may be tempted to mark it as incorrect that uh, how can government fix a maximum number of public sector enterprises but government have indeed fixed it so maximum of four public sector enterprises okay uh upsc may trap you by saying that maximum of one enterprise should, uh, can be there okay so upsc can say that but maximum remaining to be privatized or merged or subsidized with other okay theek hai baaki sab ko ya to band kar dega ya privatize kar dega ye to simple non strategic sector we have already talked about non strategic sectors so in this sector cpsc will be privatized otherwise they shall be closed so isme to which has any it's it's clear but only thing is only thing is all pscs all public sector enterprises this applies to all public sector enterprises now third point national bank for financing infrastructure and development nafid okay you should be careful with 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 these forms also, NAFIT uh, acronym you should be careful. But again, I don't think UPSC will will play a game here. They will tell you this National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development NAFIT. Okay, again, first thing you have to be very clear, very very clear that it was announced in Budget 2021. Okay, so so it was not it was not announced in 2022 23. Okay, there were discussions related to NAFIT. That's why we are talking here, but. it was not announced in budget 2022 23 okay nafit okay now we know why why what is the purpose of having a nafit because we we uh, it's it's all it's always in news that india's infrastructure is uh, is is not up to the mark because of lack of long term financing okay and why there is lack of long term financing because these public sector banks one to they have their own limitations and another is these public sector banks are not sure of the financial viability of many uh, infrastructure projects so they are not investing okay that that's one of the problems that they are not sure about the financial viability so they are not putting their money okay because they are afraid that the money which they will uh, invest in in these these long term projects may turn into a npa because it has already happened in past okay that's why that's why to finance long term infrastructure projects which may appear as bit risky to to commercial banks government have came up with national bank for financing infrastructure and development right so dfis are set up for providing long term finance okay uh now if if upsc will give you acronym then it will become bit more difficult if upsc will give this full form national bank for financing infrastructure and development then to infrastructure related funding hai ye puchne ka koi matlab nahi banta clear hai okay but but this long term thing is important okay so you face so so they may say that it's a short term thing it's not it's long term thing okay now let's see other facts related to nafit now nafit have two 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 types of objectives both financial objectives and developmental objectives okay so objectives of nafit financial objectives and developmental objectives financial is to directly or indirect financial objectives means what it will it will somehow it will arrange finance that's what financial objective right so to directly or indirectly lend invest or attract investment for infrastructure project located entirely or partly in india okay most of most of other parts of the statement are 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 not that important as long as you know that financial objective means it will it will directly or indirectly lend invest or attract investment for for infrastructure projects but to be located entirely or partly in india okay this is very important okay 
anyway, uh, anyway, you can think when uh, how UPSC can can twist this uh, fact to trap you. How UPSC can twist this fact to 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 trap you. Okay, so UPSC may say that uh, NAPFID will fund only those infrastructure projects which are entirely in India. Okay, so that can be one of the things. Okay, why? Why? Uh, can you tell me? Can you tell me any one infrastructure project uh, related to India which is not entirely in India? Tell me name of one infrastructure project which is uh, uh, which is not entirely in India, which is partly in India and partly in some other country. Uh, ONGC, right, right, it is investing in infrastructure. Uh, ONGC Videsh is, is investing in infrastructure uh, in some other things. Uh, tell me, tell me any um, connectivity related infrastructure project. Connectivity related infrastructure project, which is partly in India and partly in some other, uh, some other country. Okay, let me give you one more clue. Uh, think about uh, our 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 linkage with uh, northeast asia so sorry southeast asia think think about uh, india's connectivity with southeast asia can you can you recall any project okay uh, so 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 there so there are connectivity projects uh, to link northeast of india with say uh, uh, countries in uh, southeast asia right so 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 those those projects can be there okay so directly or indirectly linked okay okay so the, so that is financial objective second developmental objectives include facility include facilitating the development of the market for bond loans derivatives for infrastructure financing See, in, in financing, in financial objectives, they are Kaladan multimodal project, right? Kaladan multimodal project is, is, is one of the things which is connecting uh, India with uh, Southeast Asia. So, right, right. Uh, thank you, thank you, Ima. So, financial objective is, is more related to directly or indirectly lending investing and developmental uh, objectives is related to development of market of bonds loans, derivatives, infrastructure financing. Again, you don't have to go into detail these technical terms. Only you have to remember that it also, uh, NAFIT also plays its role in development of bond market in India. Okay, because if you do not know this, then you are more likely to mark it as incorrect. Okay, if you, if, if, if you will be under the impression that National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development, the only job of NAFIT is to fund infrastructure projects. If you will be under that impression, then you are more likely to mark its developmental objectives as incorrect. So UPSC may say that one of the one of the role of one of the objectives of NAFID is to uh, ensure development of bond market in India. So that is also a correct statement, right? Okay. So two kind of objective are financial and developmental. Here you can be trapped. Again, see functions of NAFID. You don't have to remember all these functions, okay? Once you know, once you know that NAFID has financial objectives and developmental objectives, then you know that extending loans and advances for infrastructure projects, obviously, yes, right? These are intuitive facts, okay? Once you know that NAFID have financial objective and developmental objectives, then it's all functions are mostly intuitive, okay? Extending loans and advances, yes, right? Taking over or refinancing such existing loan, yes, right. Okay, attracting investment from private sector investors, yes, right. Okay, or attract investment for infrastructure projects. It's it's directly written in in, in financial objectives. Okay, organizing or facilitating foreign uh, participation in infrastructure project, yes, right. Okay, because it is related to developmental objectives also. So you don't have to remember each and everything. Okay, you don't have to remember it. But you should have, uh, you should just look at it and see that all these things are intuitive. You don't have to read it. Okay, it's, it's okay. Just say that, okay, it's, it's, it's okay.
Then similarly, facilitating uh, negotiations with various governments for dispute resolution in the field of infrastructure financing. Okay. Provide consultancy services in infrastructure financing. So the moment you see infrastructure financing uh, in 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 the uh, in the statements related to the functions of NAVFIT, then it's 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 highly likely that that a statement is correct. Okay, because NAVFIT is uh, is dealing with all 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 issues related to infrastructure financing. Okay, so it is it, so so it's it's mostly intuitive. It's correct. You don't have to worry much about this portion. This DFIs do not accept deposits from people. Okay, so NAFIT do not accept deposits from people. Be very careful here. Okay, you may think that it is development finance initiative. So maybe individuals can uh, can can also uh, invest their money. Uh, individuals will also deposit their money in in the NAFIT since it is a bank, and then NAFIT can use that deposit for infrastructure financing. You may get into that kind of thinking, but this is incorrect. Okay, so NAFIT do not accept deposits from people. Okay, very clear. So this this was okay. And if they do not accept deposits from people, then from where they will uh, they will source fund. Okay, we'll we'll see. Uh, we have listed down the sources from which they can uh, take money, but not from individuals. NAFIT cannot take money from individuals who will re regulate NAFIT RBI okay so this is again one fact uh, this is this again this again is easy thing okay that RBI will regulate NAFIT because it is a bank okay so all banks are regulated by uh, RBI so even even if you do not know the typical nature of of NAFIT then again then also you can play a tukka game and get it as correct okay so it's a regulation by RBI as per RBI 1934 as an all India financial institution. Okay. Now, uh, okay. So regulation by RBI as per okay as an all India financial institution. Okay. So so NAFID is a is a, is a DFI. Okay. NAFID is a DFI. That one. Okay. Uh, NBFC. Uh, as long as I remember uh, uh, currently, uh, DFI and non banking financial. Uh, no, I don't. I, uh, right, right now, I don't think uh, DFI uh, and, and NBFC are same. DFI, uh, right now, my view is DFI cannot be considered a NBFC, though, though after the session, uh, I, will, I will let you know. Okay? So, so. Uh, Okay, so so uh, go go back to YouTube channel and 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 I I will I will comment below YouTube channel. Okay, answer to this I will comment below YouTube channel. Or else you can contact me uh, if you are in WhatsApp uh, if you are in Telegram group I am there so you can contact me there. Uh, currently my 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 understanding is DFI is not NBFC. Okay, <clears throat> so regulation by RBI right. The chairperson of of this is appointed by central bank. In consultation with RBI. Now this is this is this is important thing. Okay, this is important thing that chairperson of 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 NAFID, UPSC may may frame a statement saying that chairperson of of NAFID, uh, is appointed by RBI. Okay, so that will be incorrect statement. Chairperson of NAFID is not in, not uh, appointed by by RBI. It is appointed by central government in 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 consultation with RBI. Okay. Then prior, this this is very important term, very important uh, feature. That prior sanction prior sanction for investigation prosecution. Okay, so if anybody want to prosecute uh, any any person related to NAFIT, then they have to take prior sanction. Okay, so so this you have to uh, this this is this is important fact. Okay, so if you want to prosecute somebody uh, for 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 any any kind of illegal activity. Then you have to take prior sanction. That's one. This this detail you may ignore. Court will also require prior sanction for taking cognizance of offenses, right? So prior sanction is required. Nobody can prosecute. Huh. Now see here, source of fund. 
source of funds, we, we, we just saw that uh, NAFIT do not take, cannot take individual deposit. If NAFIT cannot take individual deposits, then what are the sources for its income? Okay, one so loan can be raised both in Indian rupees and foreign currencies, right? So this is one. Again, it is very important to note that NAFIT can can raise loan both in Indian rupee and foreign currency, okay? Or by the issue or sale of various financial instruments, including bonds. Okay. okay what is difference between uh, is the, is the, is there any is there any material difference between loan and bond? Is there any fund at 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 very fundamental level? Is there any difference between loan and bond? Let me know in chat if you think there is any fundamental difference between loan and bond. And number two, uh, what is the fundamental difference between bond and securities? Bonds are non-interest bearing. Are you sure? Bonds are non-interest bearing. If bonds are non-interest bearing, right now if you are using Google, try to Google uh, uh, GSEC uh, interest paid on government securities. You can Google interest paid on government securities and you will see interest rate. Okay, 4%, 5% interest rate being, being paid on uh, government bonds. So, 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 uh, not all bonds are non-interest bearing. Okay, let it be. Let's let's move on. And what's what's difference between difference between bond and securities? Bond and equity. Sorry, not bond and securities. What is difference between bond and equity? This difference is more fundamental and this can be asked by UPSC. Difference between bond and equity. Bond versus equity. What is fundamental difference between bond and equity? If a, if a, if a company want, uh, if a company is in need of money, then it can get money either by floating bonds or by floating equities. Equity gives dividend. Yes, yes, you are right that equity gives dividend. But why do equity gives dividend? What uh, come come to more come to more fundamental level? Yes, yeah, you are right. Right, 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 Hindu, right. So, so, so in uh, Avishak, while when you were right that equity gives uh, dividend, but why? Why equity gives dividend? And answer is given by Hindu that equity is instrument of ownership. Okay. Right, right, right. So, so when you are buying uh, equity in something, when you are buying share of, say, uh, say, say, when you when you are buying share of, uh, till name of any company like ONGC, if you are buying share in ONGC, then you are actually, uh, yes, yes, bond is lending instrument, right? Uh, now, 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 tell me one thing that if if uh, if 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 company will become bankrupt. The properties of the company will be sold then whether the whether money will be first given to equity holders or bond holders suppose there is a company okay right right bond right so so if a company uh, will become bankrupt and its property will be sold then the money will be first given to bond holders because that is loan okay if you have equity of that company then you are malik okay then you are owner if everything is good then you will get more money. But if, if, if things go wrong, then you will lose more. Right, right. So source of fund, NAFIT. Let's, let's, let's get back to NAFIT. So loans can be raised both in Indian rupee and foreign currency or by the source. Okay. Now, now see, NAFIT may borrow money from, so, 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 these, so these are the organizations in which NAFIT can borrow money. Okay, central government, Reserve Bank of India, scheduled commercial bank, mutual fund, just and multilateral institutions. Okay, 
so uh, i don't think there is anything um, uh, anything tricky here okay so you can guess uh, all these as correct okay so central bank yes reserve bank of uh, india yes scheduled commercial bank mutual fund uh, multinational institutions right so so from all these avenues nafit may, may borrow money uh, you may pay attention here that nafit may also borrow money from multilateral institutions like like world bank or or this okay nafit may, may also borrow money from reserve bank of india now here here you have to be extra careful that this is also correct nafit may also borrow money from reserve bank of india okay because reserve bank of india do not uh, do not lend money to anybody okay so if any if any organization can take loan from reserve bank of india you should know about that organization so that so that's it and the share of nafit may be held by why why i asked you a question about equity and bond it's it was because of this okay because these things were these organizations can give loan to nafit okay these organizations can give loan to nafit while these organizations can can have a share in nafit again you don't have to remember all these things okay just take a look see that okay all these organizations can give share to nafit it's very unlikely that upsc will play a game here but in case upsc will you just just have a look that share of nafit may be held by central government to theek hai multinational institutions so that pension fund we kar sakta hai insurers we can also do that banks and any other institutions prescribed by the central government can do that okay so it's it's now come to last point last point is very important that initially central government will own 100% share of the institution okay so right now 100% share of the nafit is owned by central government and slowly slowly it will get diluted okay slowly share of the central government will get diluted but to begin with central government owns 100% okay so so uh, now this point you will have to keep a keep an eye okay you will have to keep an eye on current affairs okay that uh, because this statement is correct at present but uh, we do not know what what will happen uh, in this 2 uh, 3 month months between the examination so suppose this ownership pattern will change between the examination you will have to prepare for that okay because if if ownership of the government will get diluted then this statement will become incorrect that go said to government on 100% share so so you have to uh, you have to be careful here okay now another thing again talked about uh, one station one product concept okay so one station one product this concept was introduced by this year's budget okay one station one product concept to help local business and supply chain but it says that uh, it aims to promote local product by making each railway station promotional and each railway station a promotional and sales hub okay so 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 each railway station is is being connected to slowly right now uh, this project is uh, just being unveiled okay not all the stations have been connected to to one product but slowly as time will move then each railway station will be connected to one one typical product which will uh, which will be promoted or, and sold on that uh, railway station okay so so that that's that's the idea one nation one station one product okay now here one station one product upsc have have uh, very very uh, less a scope to trap you here because the moment you even if you do not know anything about this but if you say one station one product only thing you have to remember is this is uh, it's, it's 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 talking about railway station the moment you know it is talking about railway station you can guess this okay so this is like intuitive statement you can easily guess this okay uh, but uh, th there are some 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 more developments on related to this product some some facts okay some statement some some station some railway stations have already uh, identified the project uh, identified the product which they are going to uh, promote okay and 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 some of these products are gi uh, some of these products have ge geographical indications okay this may this makes these things important again even though even though these things are part of uh, culture but 
बट कल्चर पोर्सन ऑफ यू पी एस सी सिलेबस लाइफ तो सब एक ही है सब जगह वेदर यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इकोनॉमी और 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 यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कल्चर पॉलिटी वट एवर इट्स इट्स ऑल पार्ट ऑफ लाइफ एंड एंड यू पी एस सी एग्जाम जी एस पेपर एक ही पेपर है बट स्टिल दीज थिंग्स ऐसे तो वी वी रीड दीज थिंग्स अंडर कल्चर सबिटिंग ओके सो आई विल नॉट गो इन टू डिटेल ऑफ जी आई एंड वट ऑल थिंग्स आर देयर बट सिंस इट इज रिलेटेड टू वन स्टेशन वन प्रोडक्ट आई वॉन्ट टू मैंसन इट दैट तिरुपति रेलवे स्टेशन आइडेंटिफाइड कलमकारी साड़ी एंड टेक्सटाइल्स ओके सो कलमकारी साड़ी एंड टेक्सटाइल इज ए जी आई प्रोडक्ट ओके ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश ओके सो कलमकारी साड़ी एंड टेक्सटाइल इट्स जी आई ओके यू हैव टू नो दिस सिमिलरली चन्ना पत्ना ट्वाइस ओके चन्ना पत चन्ना पत्ना ट्वाइस इज ऑल्सो ए जी आई एंड इट इज रिलेटेड टू विच स्टेट कर्नाटक ओके सिमिलरली विशाखापत्तनम स्टेशन हैव एडॉप्टेड दिस इटिकोपक्का लैक्योर वी ट्वाइस ओके तेलंगाना आंध्र प्रदेश ऑल्सो ओके सो विशाखापत्तनम इज एन आंध्र प्रदेश राइट so so okay since 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 uh, both the states were same and the culture the, there must be cultural contiguity so so that's okay again so 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 these these gi these products becomes important for exam because of one station uh, one product scheme right now how upsc can ask uh, these facts anybody would like to uh, to to to, uh, to to share how upsc can ask these concepts uh, uh let me know two three ways in which upsc okay so so one to they can they can just give you a pair okay that uh, gi tags and and estate so mismatch mismatch yes right 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 and and another 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 way in which it can be asked is which of the following products have gi tag okay so so they can give you these products and then they will ask you which of these have gi tag okay another way in which it can be asked is which of the following uh, products have been adopted under one station one nation product uh, this is this is uh, i don't think uh, upsc will go to this level that they will uh, that they want you to monitor which which products are being uh, adopted by by one station one one product but but since 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 these things are in news because of that it becomes important okay so so remember this um, and 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 keep your eye on this kind of news okay keep your eye because many more stations in coming days will adopt one product okay so keep an eye on on these kind of developments whenever there is uh, uh, any development of that kind just make a note because it can be asked if it is not a gi product then you should not care much about okay because it's unlikely that upsc will ask any any product okay mostly they will they will have focus on gi product since we are talking about about since we are talking about gi i just wanted to say okay geographical indication so it is sign so it is it, it is a sign used on product that have specific geographical origin and the and the important thing about geographical indication is that it's it's a property is because of the because of its place of origin that the typical property of the project product is because of uh, origin okay let's not uh, focus much of our time here this to naam se hi clear hai geographical indication agar uh, agar aapne ek bar bhi kabhi padha hoga to this statement to you don't need to revise even okay see again again why i am telling this time and again is when you are revising for 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 uh, prelims examination it's not like you have to remember all these things you don't have to remember all the facts but you have to remember uh, mainly those facts where you can be trapped okay if you think in this this fact you won't get trapped then you can revise quickly let's let's move on but the moment you see that something uh, which where, where there is a trap you have to stop and revise those things more often and you have to identify such things and then revise it again in last last week or last 10 days of examination which facts you will revise okay so you have to revise these facts where you think you can be trapped okay there you won't be revising that uh, definition of geographical indication one week before exam you won't be revise 
you don't want to revise that geographical indication is assigned used on products okay uh, whose, whose pro property is because of its origin this to ye to uh, itna kam time mein ye to revise nahi karoge so gi tags are issued as per geographical indication of goods uh, registration act okay now again again ye jo hai geographical indication of goods registration protection act 1999 this is uh, self explanatory okay but this is self so upsc will certainly not give this a statement okay it may say that gi tags are used as per some other act okay it will they, they will they will uh, mention some other act so you should know that there is a separate act for this if you if you know just this that there is a separate act you don't have to remember name of the act exactly for prelims examination you just have to know that there is some act related to uh, gi okay then you will be able to mark that statement as incorrect this tag is issued by geographical indication registry okay under the okay again see upsc is not going to ask you that gi tag is issued by geographical indication registry this to self explanatory this is very clear by name itself okay it may give you some other uh, organization and then tell you that's one thing and another thing it can be it can check is that geographical indication registry is under department of industry promotion and internal which is under ministry of commerce okay so ministry can be asked okay this organization cannot be asked because it is self self evident okay but ministry can be asked or else this this organization can be twisted okay you basically may play game here now again this point is very important okay the effect of a gi tag obtained in a particular jurisdiction are limited to the territory of that jurisdiction itself okay only okay so if you have if if you if you have filed for gi tag status in india then you will have your product will have protection only within india okay so if somebody else will sell that product in france or if somebody else will sell that product in, in any other country then you won't have protection there clear so the effect of gi right obtained in particular jurisdiction are limited to jurisdiction of that uh, that that jurisdiction only very clear here isme kisi ko koi dikkat nahi ki agar india mein uh, register kiya hai to protection will be available only in india protection will not be available uh, anywhere else then but there is a one one way another way of obtaining gi protection abroad obtaining gi protection there are two ways of obtaining gi protection abroad okay the two ways one way is to you can directly apply for registration in some other country okay if you will if you will be registered in other suppose darjeeling tea okay so if the darjeeling tea will uh, will apply for registration in some other country like say us or uk then uh, gi status of darjeeling tea will be honored in that country itself other way is through two international registration systems administered by wipo what is full form of wipo okay so if you are if you are part of if your product is part of either lisbon system or madrid system of wipo then you will get protection in many more countries which are part of this again if your product is registered under lisbon system or madrid system then your product will get protection in many more countries but only in those countries which are also part of lisbon system and madrid system again we will not get into detail that what is lisbon system and what is madrid system this this detail you do not require but at least you should know this that lisbon system is is something related to gi tag okay and same is case of madrid system madrid case madrid system is related to source of origin okay you do not have to uh, remember too much detail about these systems just to know that lisbon system okay just to know that lisbon system and madrid system is uh, is is uh, can can be used by uh, products to have gi uh, gi approval in many other countries also again many other countries not in all countries be very careful not in all country even if your product is part of lisbon system or madrid system you will not get protection in all the countries only in those countries which are part of this system 
okay so be very careful with the play of word and lisbon system and madrid system is related to wipo what is full form of wipo and i think upsc have again asked also in 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 one previous year question upsc have asked uh, uh, related to uh, gi tag and and the international organization associated okay what is full form of wipo okay so wipo is world intellectual property organization okay wipo is world intellectual property organization this is one of the important organizations about which you should know okay what is wipo uh, what is its mandate where is its headquarter so things like this you, you are expected to know now i want you to search this is 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 uh, gi tag and and trips anyhow related trips is related to which organization trips is related to wipo or some other organization see upsc can, upsc can ask very simple question uh, directly it can ask that trade related intellectual property uh, this trips is related to which are the following organizations a b c d it can directly ask okay so trips is related to wto right now uh, do do uh, do trips agreement of wto give protection to geographical indications this is my question to you okay go search it and and we will discuss this in tomorrow's session okay so do trips agreement under wto protect gi tag now see we were talking about one budget of this year talked about one station one product initiative but there is a similar there is a similarly named initiative named as one district one product okay now one district one product initiative is by department of commerce okay ministry of commerce ka hai one district one product now okay uh, okay okay hema okay okay let's 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 uh talk about it again in tomorrow's class now tell me here one district one you must have heard about one district one product program the objective is to convert each district of the country into an export hub here export export is the is, is the keyword here see in one station one product scheme there was no component of export at least not not directly export one 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 station one product was related to promoting a local product that's it promoting a local product that was the thing okay but one district one product is directly related to turning a district into export hub be very careful okay so one it's it's objective of one district one product is directly related to uh, uh, converting each district of the country into export hub so so if 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 any statement says do not include export hub then it will not be correct related to one district one product thing okay so isme to kya hota hai ki do you have to identify one one unique product of that district and then promote it simple now again there, there is a fact the, there is a recent development related to one one uh, one district one product that's why so the food processing ministry have in an agreement with this you do not have to remember this this much detail only thing you have to remember is that food processing ministry have inked an agreement with nafed to develop 10 brands as one district one product okay now you have to remember those those brands those brands become important because of this current affairs development these brands these brands becomes important because because of uh, food processing ministries this step one district one product these brands have been selected by uh, food processing ministry to to uh, to develop as one district one product okay right 
Now again, UPSC will not ask you uh, which of the following products are selected under uh, this uh, one district, one product. That to had ho jayega. Because there are so many, so many brands, so many districts, more than more than uh, more than 500 districts in India. So you are not expected to remember all those things. Okay. But since this is a current development, you should you should remember that which products are related to at least which state. Okay. So so these these products are mapped to different states and you are expected to remember at least this one okay uh, again I, I don't think that UPSC will ask from which district so like say Amritphal Amritphal is Amrajos and it is related to Haryana okay Pori Gold Rajasthan Kashmiri Mantra to Kashmir uh, this so it's it's very unlikely that UPSC will ask Kashmiri Mantra because it's 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 very clear by name similarly whole wheat cookies of Delhi bake it cannot be asked Naam sahi clear hai. Okay. Somdana Millet, Khane Maharashtra, and Madhu Mantra, Khane Uttar Pradesh. Okay. So you should know that these six brands are related to which states. Okay. Uh, you do not know UPSC's, uh, UPSC examiner may think that, let, okay, okay, let's, let's make the question hard. Let's, let's ask some irrelevant fact. Okay. No, I don't want, I, I'm not saying that these are irrelevant facts, but, uh, who remembers all these things? But then, okay, uh, let's 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 uh, have a look. Who knows? Maybe. Okay, millets. When I see millet here, I just want to ask you here again. Uh, just in a while, we will talk about that. Uh, International Day of Millet. International Year of Millet. Which year will be celebrated as International Year of Millet? 2018, yes, it was. 2018, it was. Uh, I'm talking about a future year. Any future year? Okay, you will see. You will see. Uh, 2023, right. Right, right, you do right. Okay, you will talk more about it just in a while. Okay, Kavach. Now, again, Kavach was talked about. In, in this year's budget. Okay, that's why we are talking about coverage. Okay, so all you want to know is it is anti collision technology and related to railways. Okay, so prelims, prelims relevant fact related to coverage is one, it is anti collision technology. Okay, so, so the trains, the moment uh, the sensors will identify that two trains are on same track, then they will stop. Okay, so that's the one thing. So coverage, you have to remember that it, uh, it is anti-collision technology. Second, it is related to railways. Third, that it is developed by RDSO. Okay, that coverage is developed by Research Design and Machine Guide Organization. Okay, in fact, we have asked a question in our top gear also. Okay. So, in case you have attempted the test, you know that we have asked this. Okay. So, so Kavach is, is, is indig and another thing is that it is developed indigenously. UPSC may say that India have imported Kavach technology from Japan or India have imported Kavach technology from Germany. These are some of the places from which we, we import uh, technologies, uh, railway technologies. So, so, but that's incorrect. IDSO have developed it in house. Okay, so only three things you need to remember about Kavach, only three things. One though it is anti-collision technology, uh, second it is anti-collision technology of railroads, okay, because be very careful, you may get, uh, UPSC may confuse you saying that it is anti-collision technology for bus, it is anti-collision technology for spacecrafts, okay, so no, it is an, Kavach is anti-collision technology of railway. So railway, anti-collision technology and RDSO. If you know these three facts about Kavach, it's, it's a, if UPSC will ask anything related to coverage, they will ask this only. Okay, you don't have to go into detail about the technologies. Okay, Parvat Mala. Now again, in Parvat Mala, uh, only thing I found it worth asking is, see, the moment you see Parvat Mala, you have you have already uh, you have, you have already heard heard of statements like uh, uh, Bharat Mala, Sagar Mala. Okay. So you may be tempted to 
Parvat Mala, suppose, suppose there is a statement saying that Parvat Mala initiative is related to uh, increasing uh, highway density in, in, in uh, increasing, increasing high, highway density in hilly, hilly districts. Okay. Those of you uh, who know Hindi, they know that Parvat means mountain. Okay. So you can be trapped here. That Parvat Mala, if, 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 if there is a statement, if there is a, if there is a statement saying that uh, Parvat Mala is an initiative to increase uh, length of highways in, in hilly districts of India. Will it be a correct statement or an incorrect statement? Let me know if there is a statement saying that Parvat Mala is an initiative to promote, uh, is an initiative to increase highway density in India. Why it is incorrect, Abhishek? Right, right, right. So, so this is the only trap. This is the only trap I could think of that UPSC will ask. If UPSC will ask anything related to Parvatmala, it will explore, it will exploit this thing only. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let me let me uh, let me have well. Okay, Chardam Road. Okay. So, so all you have to remember in Parvat Mala is that it is related to rope way. That one. Another thing that you have seen Gati Sakti. While we were discussing about Gati Sakti, we have seen that Parvat Mala initiative is also linked to Gati Sakti. Okay. So UPSC may say that which of the following initiatives are linked to Gati Sakti. Okay. It is a digital platform. So which of the following initiatives are linked to that? Parvat Mala is one of the one of the initiatives, right? All all connectivity uh, schemes can be related, linked to uh, Gati Sakti. Okay. Then another thing is Ministry of Road Transport and Highway. Okay. So the ministry which is implementing Parvat Mala is Ministry of Road Transport and Highway. Okay. Very clear. And third, it will check an app on PPP mode. Nowadays, though, I don't think that anybody will be confused by fourth by third statement. That Parvat Mala initiative will be taken up on PPP mode. Okay, government is fiscally very stressed. Government do not have enough money to invest in infrastructure. So almost all infrastructure projects, government is trying to rope in uh, uh, private sector. Okay, so this 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 to one of the things uh, for for prelims examination. The moment you see that government is investing, government is inviting PPP, that that statement. Most mostly that statement will be correct, okay? Because nowadays government is inviting every uh, in in every pro, in every project government want PPP, okay? Because they do not have enough cash, okay? So ye to third wala to it's it's de facto correct. Third wala de facto correct. Ropeway is the only thing you have to remember. Okay. International year of millet 2023. Again, be very careful. These things these things. These things become so important because budget budget speech contains these these things. Okay, budget speech of finance ministry in 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 budget speech finance ministry talked about these things. Okay, that's why it becomes important. International year of millet declared by UN. Okay, so so uh, international year of millet by UN. Okay, it may, it may say that uh, international year of millet. To, uh, 2023 have been declared International Year of Millet by World Food Organization. Okay, so that will be incorrect statement. Okay, World Food Organization ne kiya hai, UN ka General Assembly ne kiya hai. Okay, now let, now, now let me ask you this thing. World Food Organization, WFO, uh, is, it, uh, is, it, is, it, is it a specialized body of United Nations? FAO. Okay, Food and Agriculture Organization. Okay, uh, I, I wanted to ask about FAO. Okay, Food and Agriculture Organization. Is it is it is it a specialized organization, specialized body of UN? Okay, see all 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 I wanted to say is that when you are reading one when you are reading one subject, when you are revising one subject. You should be uh, going non-linear. Okay, you should be thinking about 
other things which you can revise okay so just while you just while revising re revising uh, these things you can also revise some connected thing okay that will make your revision more efficient okay so declared by un okay ye to theek hai so declared by un okay not fao resolution is sponsored by india this becomes very important because the resolution was sponsored by india so this is so correct theek hai third to resolution intended to increase policy so this is this is too obvious okay nobody will say that this statement is correct okay that the resolution is intended to increase public awareness on health benefits of millet ha huh, sahi hai this again is, is 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 very intuitive fact you don't have to read it twice ye to sahi hai now why 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 there is so much stress on millet there is so much stress on millet because of two things one is because of uh, health benefits another is because of climate change okay because uh, millet 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 can with stand variations in 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 climate okay uh, millet uh, the water water uh, water efficiency of of millet is very high uh, it do not require much water so so that's why importance of millet is increasing so ek to ho gaya climate change millet is related to climate change aur dusra ho gaya nutrition aspect okay millet this is important prebiotic okay nutrition aspect uh, there is insoluble fiber in millet both soluble and insoluble fiber again this is not my forte okay i i i am i am venturing into a bit of science and tech okay i have read science and tech uh, for my own preparation okay but that that's not my forte okay but at least okay you know okay yeah. so nutrition millet is okay so both both soluble and and insoluble fiber millet have both soluble and insoluble fiber and insoluble fiber in millet is known as prebiotic and what is what is prebiotic it supports good bacteria in your digestive system okay prebiotic good good bacteria in your digestive system okay this can be asked be very careful okay since millet is is since international year of millet is 2023 so these facts related to millet can be asked okay maybe not as a part of economy but as a part of science and tech you don't know okay so you have to uh, prepare this that one to prebiotic and second is millet is also excellent source of beta carotene now what is beta carotene beta carotene are pigments which gives color to plant okay we don't have to uh, read much about that okay just if you know that beta carotene is something it's it's a chemical which gives color to plant enough for you okay another thing you have to know about beta carotene is this natural pigment acts as antioxidant okay now to ek to ye ho gaya ki millet mein beta carotene hota hai and beta carotene is uh, is is uh, beta, beta carotene acts as a antioxidant now you have to ask yourself this that why antioxidant is important okay so you have to google why why antioxidant is important okay is it related to free radicals whether 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 abundance of anti antioxidant have anything to do with dealing with free radicals is it anything related to aging okay so you have to uh, so when you are when you are reading even economy when you are revising even economy if you see something related to that you should google and just find a interesting fact and, and just note it down in your notes so that you can revise it 10 days before exam okay so so millet related to so related to millet prebiotic beta carotene antioxidants and millet is rich in potassium and rich in many other things okay rich in iron things like that okay there are many, there are many more things just have a look but since these things are bit more typical i selected these things for you okay and then 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 we have these informations okay uh after after 2019 after 2019 we keep uh, we keep our eye on 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 those products in which india is a leader okay um, do you remember? okay so let's let's see india leads the world in millet production okay india is largest producer of millet in world okay one second is which is the largest producer largest producing state of millet okay rajasthan is largest millet producing state okay i don't think uh, upsc will ask a state but who knows okay so just to be on safe side i written this rajasthan is largest millet producing state 
and India leads to leads world in millet products. Okay. Uh, any any anybody uh, like to tell me what happened in 2019 prelims examination that we are talking about this fact here? There was a question in 2019 uh, prelims examination, and because of, because of that question only, we are talking about these kind of facts. Before 2019, people used to just say that these kind of facts cannot be asked, so so just avoid it. Even now, I would not suggest that you should make a list of all the products and then uh, prepare ranking of India, but at least those products which are important and where India is at least the leader, those products you should know. Okay. So in 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 2019, UPSC asked about about rice producing states. Okay, rice. Yes, right, right, Hindu. So in 2019, UPSC asked about rice. Okay. Then okay, uh, we we have next six seven more minutes. Let's 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 discuss this. Can Bitwa product project again? Can Can Bitwa project was talked about in this year's budget? Okay, so okay, so so uh, sorry. So so can so uh, sorry okay. So Ken Bitwa project, uh, money have been allocated uh, for, for execution of Ken Bitwa project in this year's budget. So it becomes important. Okay, and it aims to transform, transfer surplus water from Ken Bitwa in MP to Bitwa in UP. This, this you should remember. Okay, that it aims to transfer surplus water from Ken River, which is in MP to Bitwa in UP. Okay, not other way around. Okay, so it's a Ken Bitwa, easy to, easy to remember from Ken to Bitwa. Okay, but it is from MP to UP. This is also important. Take it. Now, another important thing which you have to remember is objective of Ken Bitwa project. It aims to provide irrigation benefit. Again, yeto, anybody will guess this that project is related to irrigation benefit, right? Drinking water supply, right? Okay, it's, 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 there is nothing counterintuitive. It's intuitive, you will guess it right. Hydropower generation, right? Okay, if there is a flow of water from one part to another, maybe hydropower will be produced. Even if you do not know anything about Ken, Ken Bitwa uh, river interlinking project, just the moment you know that it is a river interlinking project, you will know that it will provide irrigation benefit, it will provide drinking water, it will provide hydro. It's okay. Elephant in the room is solar power generation, okay? So, so Ken Vitwa interlinking project will also lead to generation of solar power. Okay, so so this is the track. This is counterintuitive fact. Okay, so you can see may say that which of the following are uh, potential benefits of Ken Vitwa river interlinking project. Okay, so they will give you these things and they will also give you this solar power generation. Okay, then it will become interesting. Okay, so solar power generation be be very careful. Ken Vitwa interlinking project will also lead to generation of solar power. Very clear? Okay. Now let's now let's see. Now this project passes through critical tiger habitat, Panna Tiger region. Okay. So Ken Vitwa, uh, this rival interlinking project was was uh, have been hanging in balance be, uh, because of the, because of one this fact that the project passes through Panna Tiger Reserve. So last part of Panna Tiger Reserve will be submerged. So that was one of the concern, okay, which was holding uh, passage, passage of project. Okay. So Panna, Panna Tiger Reserve is related to Ken Vitwa. Okay. Not any other Panna Tiger Reserve related to Ken Vitwa. Okay. Now again, UPSC may completely uh, ignore Ken Vitwa and they will ask question related to Panna Tiger Reserve. Okay. So now you should also remember that one to Panataka Reserve, kaha par hai, where Panataka Reserve is, then you should remember uh, if if uh, MP right, theek hai, then then if 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 there is any interesting uh, critically endangered or endangered species in Panataka Reserve, you should you should know that also also if of course apart from tiger, if there is anything any any other species, then you should know that also. Okay, the type of vegetation in Panataka Reserve. Okay, that you should know. Okay, that can be asked. Okay, now 
Panna Tiger Reserve is a critical tiger reserve. Now, critical tiger habitat. Now, critical tiger habitat is also a very technical term. Okay. Now, critical tiger reserve, critical tiger habitat is is mentioned in which act? Okay. Before that, uh, tell me one thing. National park, uh, national park, wildlife sanctuaries. These things are mentioned in which act? Okay, Wildlife Protection Act, right? 1972 Wildlife Protection Act, right? So, critical tiger habitat is is mentioned in which act? Okay, so critical critical tiger habitat is not mentioned in Wildlife Protection Act 1972, right? It is it is mentioned in Forest Right Act. Okay, so so uh, right 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 FRA, right right Hindu. So this is so now this becomes very critical. Okay, since 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 the budget talks about. Um, Ken Bethwa interlinking, since Ken Bethwa interlinking will pass through Panna Tiger Reserve, since Panna Tiger Reserve is a critical tiger habitat, so UPSC will expect you to know about critical tiger habitat. Okay, this way current affairs get, uh, when we say current affairs related to UPSC, UPSC is not asking a typical current affairs, mostly maybe one or two uh, typical current affairs question is asked in 2016. Uh, the typical current affairs questions was also asked, okay. But mostly, which is not asking typical current affairs. They are asking things, static things, which is related to current affairs, particularly in economy. When we talk about economy, uh, particularly in last two three years, if you will see questions in 2021 or questions in 2020, the questions are related to say inflation, uh, powers of uh, RBI, things like that, okay. So, so, is my baat yehi hai ki. You have to be very clear with 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 uh, with fundamentals, and more clear with those fundamentals which was in use. Okay. 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 Uh, topic six. Okay, Archika. Okay. So 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 let's let's conclude the session now. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, Archika, I will, I, will, I will share that with you. Okay, a screen of topic six. Okay, this is topic six. Uh, okay, so let's let let's let's first discuss all these things. Let's first finish the session. Okay, and then. Uh, we will see. Okay, these these uh, the decision to to share the PDF uh, will be taken by uh, the uh, uh, other other administrative teams. So the so so that I have to see uh, whether we will have permission to share PDF or not. But the but but again, more than these facts, more than these facts. Okay, Archika. So notes will be uploaded on the portal. So again, you you don't need uh, PDF. Uh, everything. Uh, so thank you, Archika. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so yeah. Again, the one fact with which I would like to uh, uh, end the session is that focus on fundamentals, particularly in economy. Focus more on fundamentals, and keep your eye open for related news in current affairs. Okay, and when you are reading about current affairs, you keep your eye open or open for less intuitive facts. Okay, that's it. If something is intuitive, you can guess it. Why to revise it more times? Okay, all the best. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Hindu. Thank you, everybody.